Welcome to the channel. Today we're going to talk about the controversial and highly sexualized topic of brake pedal switches. Buckle up. This little slice of garbage behind me is a 1969 VW Beetle that we've kind of just dumped the body on top of a C5 Corvette drivetrain. I cheapened out and used a 5.3 motor because, well, I'm disgusting and I deserve this. And unfortunately, a lot of older European nonsense relies on a pressure switch instead of a brake pedal switch to actually tell the brake pedal lights to turn on. And even some domestic manufacturers got in on the nonsense. This is our 95 Ford F-150 that, as you can see clearly on the front of the brake master cylinder, a group of engineers got together and decided to eat corn the long ways. Now this is a completely separate circuit from the brake light switch. This is specifically for the cruise control. And this little switch right here actually turned into a recall for Ford. You see, when the switch fails, it likes to catch on fire. <laughs> Don't we all? Now, when you have a little pressure switch that separates the liquid with a thin, you know, rubber membrane that runs power through it, what happens when that membrane breaks down? <laughs> In Ford's case, it just immediately bursts into flame. But you actually get a short circuit. Now, if you fuse it properly, eh, it blizzles a fuse, you're mad, no one cares, your cruise control doesn't work, end of the day. But when you don't fuse it, oh, yep. You get a class action lawsuit. So today we're gonna to install a brake pedal switch instead of the old pressure style on our old VW. While you really could just go out and get a momentary switch that as long as it's got plenty of adjustment in and out, that'll work for you. But I recommend stealing one from an application from a late 70s, early 80s Chevy C10 with the cruise control option. Now, hear me out. Now I like using the cruise control specific model because it has a normally open and a normally closed section of the switch. Now we're going to set up the brake lights on our VW Beetle so when you press the brakes it's going to send 12 volts to the back, turn everything on. But if you've got like a GM 700R4 4L60E where you need to have torque converter lockup or unlock, aka when you press the brake pedal you want your torque converter to say, nah, we ain't doing nothing, ain't going to do that. Well you actually need 12 volts all the time and when you press the brake pedal, it stops sending 12 volts to allow your torque converter to free ball it. And since we're mainly working with LS stuff and I'm lazy, well, I just buy this one switch and that works for all of it. It should be noted deep inside your diary that a long time ago, this switch used to include the adjusting nuts that go on it. They don't do that anymore. Of course not. Why would you want to do anything to benefit your customers? So go take a quick little drive to your local hardware store and pick up some half by 20, that's the fine thread version of half inch, uh, jam nuts. I've got a regular nut here, but if you pick up the jam nut, you're gonna get a little bit of extra travel space to adjust your switch and <laughs> believe you me, a little bit of extra shaft length that <laughs> goes along. Well, it's only like a quarter of an inch, but that's, that's sometimes all it takes. So now using your favorite breakfast cereal, make a pattern. I chose frosted mini wheats. You could choose other brands, but why would you? And make some sort of pattern that'll make it so your brake pedal switch lines up with your shaft. That's what she said, I guess. Eh, I don't know if that was a good time for it, but it felt right. <laughs> That's what she said. Got it. There we go. There's a good one. Now comes the hard part. You got to take all that cardboard pattern fabrication skill and turn it into something metal. So I ended up tracing it all out on 14 gauge steel, and then I gave it some mm, sweet, sweet cutting action and then bent it a little bit to give it the proper angle that it desires. Now give a little bit of breathing room between your pedal and your bracket. If you put them right up together, well, the switch and the jam nut, well, it, it, won't, it won't fit. So you gotta give it like three eighths of an inch, half inch, three quarter, okay, well, that's a little, give it like a half inch amount of space. Then you can get your jam nut in there and you still got some adjustability to make this thing light off. Then I went ahead and painted it black to cover up my poor fabrication skills and bolted it in. Now, once I got the preliminary where I think it needs to be adjustment, well, I tightened up the half inch bolts and we'll give her a shot. Now, the wiring for this swap, super easy. If you're retrofitting from a pressure switch style activation, well, you, all you gotta do is run the wires from, they're usually under hood, into the cabin and just connect it to the two pins that are closest to the brake pedal. That's, that's it, there, there's nothing else to it. Now, if you've got a torque converter that you need to unlock, well, you're gonna have to run power from your positive side jumped over to one of these terminals. And then just connect your torque converter lockup wire to the other. Now, I do like to confirm the signal is actually making it down to the transmission using a meter, but you can kind of just tell when you press the brake pedal if it's unlocking or not, but be safe, 
test it out because you don't want to lose a torque converter like 3,000 miles down the road because, well, you wired it backwards. That's never happened to me. Nope, never once. <laughs> okay, that ding right there. That's the reason I make these videos. And if you want to see more of this stuff, buckle up. Do whatever you need to do to get ready because there's always something stupid going on in this channel and I want you to enjoy that stupid with me. So do that thing. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's the, you know the spot uh, that you know I like and well, then we can do it more often together. And I promise that every time that one of these comes through your spam inbox folder, well, you won't regret, well, you might. The camera battery just died. The warning it gave me was a black screen while I was talking for an indefinite amount of time. So I guess we'll just take it from the top. Aw, oh, it didn't ding. God damn it, he dinged at the wrong time. God damn it. How are people supposed to know that you're cool if you don't ding on command? Unbelievable.